Greetings, Magi Nation. I'm here to make your perspective more vast and to dispel the deafening clouds cast over you. One of the reasons I started this channel was I kept predicting social and political trends long before I saw them mentioned in the mainstream media, even before I would see them mentioned in my preferred independent media. Some of these trends, like the one I'm about to try to define, I never hear mentioned. And it's hard to call it subconscious, conscientious self-sabotage, though I bet you can probably figure out what that means. So let me define this trend with the help of a Pfizer executive, recently caught on tape. It's called like the hypo, uh, hypothalamus, and to which they can go nano access. Right. Like, you know, the hormones are like their menstrual cycles and things like that. During a date with an undercover reporter, spilling secrets about Pfizer's plans. Like, what's developing with the whole, you know, virus mutation process? Not very creative, not very sly. Uh, Mr. Walker, I think you must have been positively enamored or drunk not to see what was going on there. Well, they're still kind of conducting the experiments on it, but uh, it seems like from what I've heard they're kind of optimizing it, but it's going slow because everyone's very cautious, like, you know. Right. I don't want to kind of accelerate it too much. Yeah. Um, but I think they're also just trying to do it as an exploratory thing because you obviously don't want out of time. Hey, man. I'm glad Project Veritas is out covering what they're covering, even if it takes this kind of deceptive investigative journalism, because it completes the other half of the picture while the mainstream news is out there covering what they cover. Up. about the menstrual cycle, so you will have to investigate that down the line. Yeah. Would the research study be delayed for COVID stuff? Like, well, not for COVID specifically. So, like now, we're basically focusing on mRNA beyond COVID. Like, no one gives a shit about COVID. <laughs> well, I mean, you're a urologist. So you must understand like what's going on with it, right? Like, well, that's why I understand that it's weird. I hope we don't find out that like there's somehow this mRNA like lingers in the body. I mean, like. Because what it has to be impacting something hormonal to impact menstrual cycles. It didn't end there either. Walker goes on to say a bunch of stuff. He spills that Pfizer sees its exec leaving and heading the FDA uh, in regulatory capacity um, for watchdogging and regulating the pharmaceutical industry is a strategy of pharma's, and he implies that that's how pharma staffs regulatory agencies. This is something that anti-GMO and food sovereignty activists have been screaming for years, that we shouldn't be letting corporations of certain industries, staff, regulatory agencies have the revolving door, they call it, between government and corporate office in order to just corrupt everything as much as possible. I will do, I mean, I will say, like, if it does come down, down the line with something wrong to that thing, and obviously people will, like, criticize, like, the big push. Because there's a lot of social pressure, government pressure, job pressure. See if it's that same way. I have to let you know why you're going to go Walker then breaks down dramatically, historically, actually. You can see him running around inside the lounge has the cops called he dives and tries to grab an ipad out of the one of the reporter's hands he has the lady running the place lock the doors illegally trapping in the project veritas reporters because he says he doesn't feel safe it's a cluster of human panic and dissembling and self victimization and it's because this man knows that he is in serious danger. It does not seem that he is just dodging getting fired and losing his extremely elite and privileged position. It seems that he is really worried about something else. And it's telling, but I'm not going to show it because I have compassion for anyone in that state, especially someone who just told on the evils and designs of conspiring men because what I believe Walker is doing here 
is what most mammals would have the quiet compulsion to do when their conscience assesses everything that they're doing and that they're part of and no longer wants to be a part of it and maybe wants it exposed and brought down because some part of them is terribly uncomfortable with where they found themselves. Okay, so Pfizer ultimately is thinking about mutating COVID? Well, that is not what we say to the public. There was a strange blackout on this event that um, compromised the number one advertiser for most major mainstream news media. They don't know how that happened. There was also some difficulty finding it on Google. Try to Google Jordan Tristan Walker shortly after it happened, and um, people had a lot of trouble. So as long as we continue to allow monopolies to control the commons. So I don't know if it's a staff thing. She's not prepared enough. Perhaps she's not expecting the questions. I don't know what it is, but I think that's the issue. This is like the fourth or fifth time. What it is is that they constantly question the qualifications of black women, and that's why people are saying that she's unprepared. And oh, I disagree. I think she's you a You can very disagree, but that's woman. the truth of it. And so this is based in racism. This is based in misogyny. I'm convinced that the view is still on the air in order to make women of all races look really bad because I can't figure out any other reason. I'm not interested in, 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 in reaching out to, well, to you. Like this is a tell because these women who are exceptionally privileged, exceptionally removed from reality, maybe due to their age, probably due to their wealth and fame, don't seem to understand what people actually are thinking or why they do anything. You know, you, wanna, you might want to call them crazy, you might want to call them stupid, you might want to call them idiots. Here's the problem. That idiot might be your shoe salesman. I just want to point out how far you can get out of touch and still be employed commentating on things that affect real people. 50,000 Ukrainians will be dead or wounded. This is going to start a humanitarian crisis, a refugee crisis in Europe. We're talking yeah. about 5 million people yeah. that, that are going to be displaced. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking to hear what is going to happen. Yeah. Well, I'm scared of what's going to happen in, in Western Europe, too. Yeah. Huh. You know, you just you plan a trip. You want to go there. I want to go to Italy for four years. I haven't been able to make it because of, of uh, the pandemic. And now this. Having said as clearly as possible that the anti-vax people seem to be the winners. Adams here is the perfect, candid, vulnerable embodiment of smart America, a term coined by George Packer, in his brilliantly insightful essay, The Four Americas, to describe one of the four categories, according to Packer, that we Americans have identified ourselves with. Smart America being the one that identifies with being college educated, being on the right side of history socially, and of course, being on the side of science. I'm gonna put, yeah, let me put a link below to that article. It was published in the once great Atlantic and every American should read it. Now far be it from me and my character to take any glee in putting back in their place people who are so concerned with appearing smarter and more educated that they would wrap their heads about it. But my read on his repeated gracious concessions of victory to us, the anti-vaxxers, is that he is still trying to maintain that status as graciously as he can. The anti-vaxxers clearly are the winners. By conceding to us some sort of intellectual victory. I want you to hear that clearly. The anti-vax people appear to be the winners. Without really understanding that that's not a game we were playing, it's not a victory we're interested in. It's not a dynamic we are participating in. It's a dynamic he was participating in and he forced upon us. Maybe they shouldn't be allowed in the hospital. Maybe they shouldn't be allowed to have their jobs anymore. If they're a nurse, maybe they don't need to be working. Doesn't matter if they was on the front line when COVID broke. Yeah. If you're not taking your vaccine, you're a selfish piece of shit. You're fired. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, that was you people. Yeah with an elitist, condescending, willful ignorance of our point of view, along with a lazy ignorance of other incoming data. Now he's going to pretend 
that he did the research. Even while he's speaking to people who can tell, he didn't look into it for himself. Because really the anti-vaxxers, I think, were really just distrustful of big companies and big government. Nope, not just distrustful of big pharmaceutical companies that constantly deal drugs that kill people and still do it even though they know it's going to kill people because the profit way outweighs even billion dollar fines. That's never wrong. It's never wrong to distrust government. It's never wrong to distrust big companies. There is value in Adams trying to convey that message. It is never wrong not to trust big government and big companies. I don't adopt a posture of automatic distrust, and I think you'd be hard pressed to explain how some 40% of America is all just a bunch of anti-government conspiracy theorists. But that's really what he thinks, so ensconced in his view and so socialized in his echo chamber. And he, he hasn't bothered at all to expand his understanding of why people, so many people, made the decision not to take an experimental serial subscription genetic immunotherapy. So if you just took the position, let's just distrust everything the government did, well, you won. You won. <laughs> they, they have the winning position. The people who didn't get vaxxed are absolutely in the winning position. You win. You win. You are the winners. You are the winners. I did not end up in the right place. The right place would be natural immunity, no, no vaccination. You should take victory and I should take defeat. We can agree on that, right? Yeah, bro, that's, that's what we're interested in. Because they, they feel better. The, the thing they're not worrying about is what I have to worry about, which is, I wonder if that vaccination five years from now. Uh, all, all of my fancy analytics got me to a bad place. Is that what's on your marker board there? And that's your analytics back there? In shorthand, I guess, is, is that's where you worked out all the differences between the Swedish model and the vaccine-heavy Israeli model and why the Swedish model worked out so much better for everyone and got to herd immunity faster? Or is that where you worked out your internal qualms about the difference between the concerns voiced by mRNA creators who were sidelined and caused entire episodes to be canceled versus the opinions of... Um, 25 year old just got out of their paid journalism internship science communicators who wrote in parentheses the single word dubious after uh, those mrna creators claims or even their claims to be involved in the creation of mrna is that where you weighed those two expert opinions for yourself is that is that where you worked out your butterflies about how long it takes to test a vaccine and who was testing it and who was going to Oxford to make sure that even the open source Oxford project for an open source vaccine that would be shared without any patent uh, was privatized. Or are you still trying to maintain the air of a scientific rational person when it's been a costume, you know what? Use a, use a word like heuristics. All of your heuristics, don't trust these guys, it's obvious, totally worked. <laughs> Bro, what you're speaking about is deplatforming, censoring, canceling, having people fired, force vaccinated, sticking their kids with needles while no one else is doing it. That's what you're talking about. And you're still trying to maintain the impression that you thought a lot about it. <laughs> you won completely. I have to mention that Adams has been an iconoclast for a while. He's spoken his own mind for a while. There are Dilbert strips that prove it. I remember reading stuff in his strips that I found to be quite brave. 
I'm not trying to diss on Adams. I am grateful that he's serving as an exemplar here of a mindset that I detest and always had a problem with growing up and now see ruining the country I call home. At the 11th hour, when it's when who knows how this election is going to go, who know who knows what the capacity for you know disinformation at the last minute to to tip the balance is then what do you do with the hunter biden laptop story i never liked sam harris i found his intellectual contribution to the discussion shallow uh snide fanatically atheist i bit my tongue when my friends lauded his efforts and debates I just didn't find him to be an informative, enlightening, inspiring, or helpful mind. But I'm not doing this to dig on him. I'm showing this next display of someone telling on himself to show how it can happen. Someone who occupies an elite atmosphere accidentally displays what they deeply believe about other people, about the flyover states, about the Republicans, about the, the unvaccinated, about the uneducated, that they can decide for them, that their democracy is dangerous populism, that their free speech is just dangerous speech and maybe a mask for hate speech, and that it's best if they not be allowed to know what's going on, speak their mind, or even vote in an informed manner. We know how this played out in 2016 with the Hillary Clinton email, you know, press conference where, where Comey in, 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 an, in an abundance of scrupulosity felt like he had to come before the cameras, I think 10 days out from the election and say, you know, we've, we're gonna open up this, this investigation again. In this very famous self-tell, Sam Harris displays this elitist attitude, extremely common on the left. How common? so common that a smart man such as he can accidentally blurt out his real attitude about the Hunter Biden laptop story and the cover-up and the conspiracy to cover it up. He says, of course there was a conspiracy. Of course intelligence agencies and the DNC and the media were in on it. Of course they were collaborating to keep the Hunter Biden laptop from being exposed because of all the terrible and incriminating and perhaps country shattering stuff on it because it implicates the Biden family and Biden is our hope at getting the orange man out and everything is worth getting the orange man out. Listen, I don't care what's in Hunter Biden's life. I mean, Hunter Biden, at that point, Hunter Biden literally could have had, had the corpses of children in his basement. I would not have cared. Right, it's like it's, there's nothing. First of all, it's Hunter Biden, right? It's not. It's like it's not Joe Biden. But even if Joe, like even the, whatever scope of Joe Biden's corruption is, like if you if we could just go down that rabbit hole endlessly and and understand that he's getting kickbacks from Hunter Biden's deals in Ukraine or wherever else, right, or China, it is infinitesimal compared to the corruption we know Trump. Is involved in now. That's not that doesn't answer the people who say it's still completely unfair to not have looked at the laptop in a timely way and to have shut down the you know the New York Post's Twitter account like that. That's a, just a conspiracy. That's a left wing conspiracy to deny the presidency to Donald Trump. Absolutely, it was absolutely right. But I think it was warranted. These are archaic, backward people whose principles come from ancient, strange, outdated tomes and all kinds of other presumptions that don't apply to most of those people, certainly don't apply to me, because uh, I find myself on the outside looking in. And as homeless as a liberal in Biden country, it is nice to see these pseudo-intellects on the left giving themselves away because they're too comfortable and don't realize how, <laughs> how wrong their perspective is until it's already come out of their mouth. And I consider Trump an existential threat to our democracy. Right now, it's not, he's not going to destroy the world very well, likely. He destroyed but, democracy in the process of protecting democracy. No, that, but that doesn't destroy it. No, our, our, 
Which brings us, dear Magi, to my final exhibit of this emerging trend. An example of someone not just steeped in corruption, but raised in it. Made to play the game the way corrupted elites play it, by the rules they have access to, and they may play it if they so like, but we cannot. Forced away from society, thereby, into secrecy, elitism, ill-gotten gains, and made to live a life of constant coping with mechanisms such as drugged orgy parties. Taking a laptop, he got soaked in Tanqueray gin and whatever fluids resultant from one of those nights of coping to a store where he signed an agreement that said the laptop would change possession if left. And then leaving that laptop filled with extremely sensitive information that would destroy his family name, his father's chances at the presidency by about 16 percentage point swing, and possibly compromising his country. Why? Because he's so tired of the game. Because after so many decades of being part of a gangster organization, someone who could gather such information and place it somewhere that it could be repossessed, explored, and divulged to the public by accident, retaining complete crackhead deniability as to any intention to do so.